talk about today. Well, uh, look, a lot of times we we look at retirement as a, as a destination, you know, as a place, and then once you get there, it's over. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we are seeing more and more is our clients are retiring, and we're seeing seniors get to the place where, of course, retirement isn't just a destination. It's a lifestyle. And one of the things that we looked at, I just uh, wrote an article specifically on some of the things that will cost you the most in retirement. And immediately, of course, everybody jumps to? Rent. Rent. rent is, health. Yeah. health. Health care, yeah. yes. That's the oh. first one. Rent is, is up there as well. But one of the that's biggest... That's interesting. Yeah. yeah you know, you want to know the biggest one? Health care. Wow. The biggest the funeral biggest, expenses. No, nah, usually just you can kidding. settle those. <laughs> it's loss, it's risk and loss of your savings. We have oh, seen oh, more and more seniors. It's fear they have. Yes, because Absolutely. it's real. People sit well, around. house payments are money. That's right. Think of it like this. You're sitting down around a table and you often are not talking about your, your losses. Most of the time when people um, talk about Las Vegas or gambling, they talk about their winnings. Boy, I won $5,000, <laughs> right? Only when you win do you yeah. brag. <laughs> Very few times do people say, oh, by the way, I lost my shirt and had to you know, thumb it uh, home <laughs> on the side of the freeway. And it's the same thing in scams and frauds. And I think that's what these bad guys look at. Mm-hmm. But it isn't just the frauds and the scams because a lot of folks are coming out and today they can publish stuff and say, oh, watch out for that product or that mm-hmm. company. But it's even the traditional savings and investing where there's a risk and there is a loss that, it, that takes place. And people don't ever plan for that. They don't realize that a 20% loss when you're 75 years old, okay, yeah, it might come back, but now you're 85. And where is it? Yeah. How long is it going to take, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And, and did you need the money between now and then? So we're seeing that some of the risks that people are taking are not appropriately suited for their particular risk tolerance. But isn't that the problem with our seniors as they're heading their 40 and 50 and 60? They're starting to see that, um, figure out that, and wonder how are they going to make investments that are going to be worthy and uh, in uh, 20 years down the line that will allow them to have the lifestyle that they want? Well, we talk about it in, in a way that says, I would prefer that you work five years longer and have a for sure plan in place, working with your financial advisor, your CPA, your insurance professional, your attorney, working with a group of people and having that for sure plan in place, as opposed to retiring early and then having to go back to work Mm -hmm. eight or 10 years later. And usually that's for minimum wage because your career is changed. Technology has come in. Mm -hmm. The folks that were your friends, your partners, your supervisors, all of those folks that matter to your life, they've moved on. Some of Mm -hmm. them retired, some died, some... And And it's very hard to get a well-paying job when you've already retired, you're up there in age, Mm -hmm. you have to take a minimal pay job. That's right. In most cases. It's not going to be like it was, you know, 20 years before. That's That's right. That's the hard part. But still, our seniors are wondering, you know, do they need to have a team? And, you know, I know some of our seniors who say, I don't need a team. I'm still working and, you know, I'm 70 and I'm getting a paycheck and, you know, I put my investments out there and people do do that and they, some of them get away with it. But then some of them, you know, don't exactly know what they're doing and they try to go on the internet and say, well, let's see if I can do this or they flip a coin or, you know, roll the dice. And, you know, sometimes, you know, Arif, don't you think that can be kind of skirting the line and walking the tight road a rope a little bit? Because of the, especially because of the false sense of success. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When the market goes up and everybody does well, you think you did something. You know, and ladies, you're married to these guys, right? When you, they look in the mirror and they, oh, you, look at what I did for us, honey. No, you didn't. You just put it there and it, everything went Anything. up. Yes, right? that's right. Like it's not, not like you picked the winner out of the, out of the losers. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's often the case where we as, as men, but often in any case, we take credit when we shouldn't. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that you're not doing <clears throat> some things proactively, of course, but just don't think that you did something when the entire market went up. You may not have been somebody who actually picked the winner. You just happened mm-hmm. to pick anything, right? It's the old monkey at the dart, uh, you know, at the Wall Street Journal or the mm-hmm. Investor's Business Daily. They throw a dart and they pick a stock. And then you had the professional stock advisor. This was a big thing in the right. in the 60s. Remember that? 
Yeah, and the dart sometimes did better. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there was no no difference between the the monkey throwing a dart at the board <laughs> and the financial guy that you kind paid, of scary, isn't you it? Paid lots of money for. But the the you know we we've talked about issues of investment in the stock market, and certainly recently people have done pretty well for sure. But you know, also think back to two thousand and eight. You know that was a problem, and. You know, you can't skirt that issue. That issue is right in front of us because when you are thinking, I have a nest egg that I have to protect, yeah. you know, you, you have to make sure that down the line it, that is done or your lifestyle is going to change. Always look at it and see, can I handle the risk? If, if there's a worst case scenario, 30, 40, 50% drop, whatever that is, if I can handle that risk, meaning the market goes backwards and my lifestyle doesn't change, I'm not going in and getting more debt. I'm not going uh, to change my lifestyle where I, I can't eat out or take the trips or be with my grandchildren the way that I want to be. If you have a 50% decline in the market, in other words, if you have a million dollars and it goes to 500000 or you have a million dollars and it goes up to $1.5 million, what's going to affect your lifestyle greater? Are you going to fly around on private jets now that you've got an extra 500000 You know, No. Probably not. No. But if you lose three or four or 500000 that that's life changing mm -hmm. because you have to you don't know when it's going to come back it might and it might it might not that's not in your lifetime no. right no no so we have to be careful when we look at risk and if the market is up and you say you know listen i've made 15% year to date fantastic take some of the winnings off the table mm -hmm. move some to safety <clears throat> i look at it like this both of you drove over here today correct mhm mm yeah i walked you walked you drove somewhere today though and got out of my car and went to a ceremony over got it. down the street for our veterans. When you drove in your car today, did you wear your seatbelt? Absolutely. Oh yes. How many that's accidents? Safe, how many car safe. accidents did you get in today? None. But None. That's, oh, that's how about a yesterday? Safety factor. Absolutely. Yesterday, I I almost rear-ended two yeah. people because they <laughs> pulled out in front of me. Oh. Okay. I mean, so you know, you're wait, going down the street. You almost hit them. On the side. He ran a I red see. light. Oh. He came out right in front of me, and I sat on my horn. Yes. And he pulled over so quick, Good. it would have made his head swim. We didn't expect us to have these stories of oh, walking I did. here I've and getting I've out. You know, right that's, and, that's scary. <laughs> it so really think of it is. like this. Just <laughs> in case, right? Another China, North Korea, Brexit, whatever happens. Mm. When those things occur, if it isn't for you wearing your seatbelt or having some of your money safe, just in case, we don't. We don't think we're going to crash our car every time we drive, but we wear a seatbelt. When we ride our bikes, when I grew up, we never rode our helmets. Mm -mm. In fact, I used to sit in the back of a pickup truck, and as long as you held on, you didn't fall out. I, I remember that. Right? <laughs> yes. On the freeway. How about the back of a station wagon? <laughs> remember that. You just sit, rolled around in the back, and it was fun, and you sat there with your friends or your sister, cousin, whatever, whoever it was. Different, different. Oh. And if the back window rolled down, you got it rolled down, and you're That's right. Hanging you're waving to people, oh, yes. sticking your head I out. Know. I Today know. We're, I've you know, done we it. Today, we bubble wrap our kids. and <laughs> Except you're not bubble wrapping your retirement accounts. People no. are still doing the old-fashioned Everything goes in the stock market because when it goes up, and if I didn't crash my car, why should I even wear my seatbelt today? <laughs> I didn't crash my car the last week. Well, my car lets me know loud and clear <laughs> when I forget to, uh, or Russ forgets to put on the seatbelt. Have you seen because people where they take it and they put it behind them and they just kind of lock it down so it makes that noise? Really? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, I remember Whoa. 10 years, 7 months, and 3 days as a Los Angeles policeman, I can tell you. All yeah. sorts of stories. Well, I can imagine. I can yeah. imagine. And they probably mm. still do it. Oh, I'm sure. No, they're not around because they got in an accident <laughs> and didn't help. It wasn't there to save them. No, no. The idea of keeping some of your life safe, <coughs> the things that you protect, the things you care about. Today, when, when, well, many years ago when I taught my kids how to ride a bicycle, they couldn't get on their skateboard, bicycle, skates without a helmet. And mm -hmm. seniors today are, are walking a tightrope without a net. Mm -hmm. And as long as they got across it, they thought it was a smart idea. <laughs> Speaking of wearing a helmet, <laughs> when my kids were younger, we used to ri race bicycles out at Indian Dunes. I remember. Oh, and I was riding there with them, but I had to you have a helmet. Not. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I loved every Indian minute Dunes of it. Indian Dunes was a little place we'd oh, go as kids. Oh, my goodness. Remember out by Castaic? Yeah. Uh, not by Castaic, by Magic Mountain. Oh, and it then, was wonderful. I know about it, but yeah. I, of course oh, yeah. I wasn't there. That, the, it uh, isn't there anymore, cool. unfortunately. Remember the um, 
the accident helicopter uh, uh-huh. yes. Vic yeah, yeah. if Moral. I remember Vic yes. Moral from Vic combat Moral. Yeah. that's right there mm-hmm. you go but it, it yeah, was it sad. was interesting because the the uh, people who ran it mm-hmm. who organized it said you cannot go out there unless you have a helmet I don't care how young or how old you are and this is in the 70s mm-hmm. oh yes yeah <laughs> maybe you know, maybe before I know that it was there at least through the 70s and 80s yeah it mm-hmm. was but so, it was it was a fun thing to do Mm-hmm. Except when mom crashes and she has to crawl that. underneath the bushes. Oh. <laughs> and both of my boys went, went, went by me, Mom, <laughs> come on, get back on that bike. <laughs> uh, but those are the risks that people take, Barbara. Yes, back and in you the don't days. Take, but nowadays, you know, as we're looking at our investments, we have to worry about, you know, is, is the risk going to be there? And it is. It yeah, just is. There's and some safety Like I said, components. there's a crapshoot with this and, you know, you know, you're here to help our seniors recognize, you know, that, you know, you have to be careful and you have to wear that helmet. I think yes, so. Yes, you do. And as you get older, things happen to you. It you does. Aren't, you aren't as stable as you used to be. One of the biggest and mistakes need, we saw recently. You need health care a yes. lot more. We saw this recently, uh, and it just reminded me. We have a client, and she's a, a nurse in her early 50s, and he was an engineer in his early 60s. Mm-hmm. And he passed away. And he was a smart guy. I think he, I know he had a master's, maybe even a PhD. Very smart guy in engineer land, mm-hmm. right? He did a lot of work with, with his, in his field. But he handled all of the retirement accounts. Mm-hmm. And he had things in fairly risky places and was moving stuff oh. around. And that's wonderful. If he's on top of it, if he feels that's the right risk for his family, fantastic. Until he passed away. And then his wife came to us, and they don't come the next day. No. Right? They, they come sometime later because their, their head is spinning, right? You've got a lot going on. You don't know what to do. So it had been a few weeks. And she comes with the notebook trying to decipher where everything is. And it took us hours to make phone calls and to lay things out of where it is, what it's for. Your money has to have a job. That's right. And if you're, the purpose of your money is to have a job to live your life's purpose, not for you to just accumulate another dollar. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we let fear drive us when we can Mm -hmm. actually take action, financially speaking, reduce the risk, relax a little bit, and enjoy life. Instead of this craziness, we see this all the time. Uh, It's very sad. Yeah, being in that business, you would see it more often than probably most people. If our seniors can get to the place, if you guys can get to the place where you are Understanding money's job is to serve you, not you serve it. And money's job is to have a purpose uh, that, that allows you to live. It might be, this is my medical account, so that if, if God forbid, I need it for medical reasons, in three, four, five, ten years, it's there for that. This one is designed to give me a second set of income once the pension may not be getting cost of living increases like it should. And Social Security, we haven't seen an increase in Social Security in I don't know how long. I think we're at <laughs> nine know. or ten years now been a long time yep Uh, and so you say well as my cost of living begins to go up but my pensions and social security stays the same i need to make up that difference so this account is to be another source of income Mm -hmm. for me Mm -hmm. six eight ten years from now if you have designated jobs of course you can change it as you go but that gives you options and it gives you freedom yeah yeah so let's keep in mind if our objective is to move through life without the fears that come with being risk averse, right? Because sometimes we had a, a, a lady come the other day. She says, I have never been in the market my entire life. Okay, well, then you just build a plan around that kind of a fear, right? If, if you're Correct. afraid of elevators, you're not going to book an appointment on the top floor of any building. No, absolutely unless not. Unless you have your tennis shoes on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but fear is what... It motivates people, though, too, to uh, reassess where they are in life. And, you know, I, I think we're seeing a, a larger homeless population, and we're seeing a, a larger senior homeless population. Mm-hmm. So that reality is there for our seniors right now. It's a huge, uh, we call it bag lady syndrome. Have you heard of that before? Yes, mm. yes. Yeah. Bag lady syndrome is, uh, I don't know if it's an official diagnosis, but in our industry, we've known about it for years. And it's women's uh, themselves. When they see a homeless lady down on the street, 
they think differently than when a guy sees a homeless guy down the street. Hmm. When a man sees a, a, a homeless guy down the street, he says to himself often, boy, that guy's lazy, needs to get a job, needs to get to work. All right? When a woman sees a, a lady down the street as homeless, I wonder what happened to her. Hmm. I wonder what or caused her that, to get to that place. Or mm -hmm. that could be me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's their thing. They're thinking, see, the guy Different. says, I can control. That guy should be able to control. I control what I do. He should be able to control what he does. Mm -hmm. The woman says, you can be the best you can. But mm -hmm. when I see a homeless lady, I'm thinking what happened to her. Yeah. Right? Some effects and, and stories and things that you can't control. So there's, a, there's this fear that at any time anything can happen to you that mm -hmm. puts you there. So... When we see our, our clients, single ladies, widows, we have a, an enormous amount of widows. And the average age of a widow, folks, is not what you think. It's in, she's in her 50s. I think it's 56. Wow. Oh, it used wow. to be 52. Now it's 56. Mm. Yeah. So we're not talking somebody who's 80 years old as a widow. And statistically speaking, some of the numbers I've seen say take the difference in the age between you and your spouse and add 11 or 12 years, depending on who you are. And you'll get a chance to see that's how long you're going to be alone. Like a friend of ours is 14 years between husband and wife. Okay? 14 mm -hmm. years plus 12. That means she's going to live about 25, 26 years without her husband. That's a whole other wow. life, right? That's right. So it is. maybe, of course, she'll remarry and those kinds of things. But, but so you have to plan to take that's care right. of yourself. It's not just, you know, oh, I'm going to be... Uh, living life with blinders, mm -hmm. and my spouse will take care of everything. You have to be planning for both. Yeah, my 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 father was 20 years older than my mom, and she's now lived 28 years longer since he's passed away. Wow! Wow! And you know, she's still she's not going to be 96 next month, and she lives years. lives she lives on her own still um, by herself. That's and wonderful. She, yeah, she's still doing well but i look back and think of your numbers and these statistics and you know it makes got to make you nervous it does but. and i think the biggest concern when you add the bag lady syndrome the way that mm -hmm. we as different genders look at uh folks that are homeless <clears throat> uh, and then we also look at the risk that we put in our lives and sometimes we yeah. take chances when it's just not appropriate when you're in your 60s 70s and 80s you shouldn't be taking the same kinds of financial risks that you do when you're in your 20s, 30s, and 40s, mm -hmm. right? Just life is a little different. Mm -hmm. You have time on your side. So our specialty at Total Financial Solutions is to sit down with folks and to see what kind of accounts, and if any, sometimes they're, they say, no, I'm good where I'm at. That's great. But it's to sit down and say, Total Financial Solutions' job is to see, can we take some or part of your money and move it into a safe place where the market no longer affects it? And you're making reasonable gains. On average, we say three to six percent. Sometimes zero, sometimes ten, but we're going to get somewhere between three to six. And the but best part about what you're saying right now, Arif, is that you're es essentially saying to our seniors, wear your helmet, put your seatbelt on, mm -hmm. don't take those chances like you just said, as you've done in the past, and assure yourself that you're going to have something in your nest egg that will allow you to survive in the long run. Uh, but to take risks now is 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 almost foolish uh, with the way things are. And, you know, the bag lady syndrome is just something out there that I think preys upon people's minds mm -hmm. and says, you know, I just fear being in that way. And, you know, it's sad that, you know, that that is what is going on here and even in our community here in Santa Clarita. We see it uh, in a lot of places. I was recently uh, at a Kings game down at the Staples Center. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching, you know, we... Oh, the freeway was backed up, so we took some of the side streets. Mm -hmm. And if you get up off to Vermont and Alvarado, and mm -hmm. there's literally people lining the sidewalks with tents, tents. like camping tents. Yes, I've mm -hmm. seen that on TV. And and you have the you have some of these uh, social progressive folks who think the right answer is to give them a tent. <laughs> and I'm thinking, are you insane? Why does that? Why is it okay? To allow this person to do that. Well, it's only because, you know, little short history lesson on politics. When Ronald Reagan was governor of California, remember, the ACLU sued and said mm -hmm. you can't have people locked up in mental institutions. Mm -hmm. And through that threat of the lawsuit and through all of that, uh, they had to change and release the, uh, the folks out on the street. And then they created mm -hmm. the 5150 law that said 
uh, danger to yourself or others, right? or gravely ill, gravely disabled. It's the only time we can be humane and, and take you off the street. So uh, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better yes. until people get their head on straight. I yeah. agree with you. And I think Los Angeles is in the top tier of homelessness. Well, it's because yes. it's California, and we have, you know, if I remember when I was in Detroit, uh, people would come to the hospital because it was going to be cold. Oh, the yeah. cold front was coming through, and they tried to get admitted to the hospital because <laughs> that was a <laughs> place where warm. they can get a meal, and it, it would be warm. But California is, you can be on the street and, and most of the time survive. But, Eric, you know, we've talked kind of negatively on things, but, you know, there's a positive twist to all of this. And, you know, if you're thinking that it's negative, you should be thinking, how do I make that positive twist? So, right. you know, I think what you're telling us is, you know, get good advice, you know. Uh, and, you know, I wanted to, you know, just if you can give us uh, your number so people can contact with you if they feel that um, there's something there that they can look forward to. How do they, how do they yeah, uh, touch I, bases with I, you? We always say get a second opinion. At least have somebody look at it, mm -hmm. and then you can know what you have because often <clears throat> it's not really explained f fairly often. But our number is 753-9683. That's 753-9683. And we're great and easy to find because we happen to be right next door to the radio station. That's right. So if you right. know where we are right now, and some of you might not, but, you know, we're in Newhall. Right on Main Street. Main That's Street. Right. Old Town Newhall. Well, thanks a million, Arif. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, yes. for, thanks for putting the seatbelt on. Yes. <laughs> and we have to take a break. Take care of yourself. Thank you. you keep too. that money flowing. Yes. Everybody else's money flowing. That's right. We will. <laughs> I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, KHTS. Little I Leaders is the newest preschool in the Santa Clarita Valley. At Little I Leaders, our outstanding teachers lead with intellect, perspective, and heart. That means our programs provide a warm, nurturing atmosphere to meet the unique needs of each child. We believe that play is a powerful form of learning for young children. That's why our kids have every opportunity to learn through the magic and excitement of play. Parents, schedule a tour today by calling 303-0400 or online at littleileaders.org. At the Burrito Factory, their motto has always been to serve quality food with fast, friendly service. But did I mention the taste? When it comes to authentic taste and huge mouth-watering burritos, the Burrito Factory is second to none. Whether it's lunch, dinner, or a catered event, Burrito Factory has the taste of Mexico to satisfy your craving. Burrito Factory on Soledad Canyon Road next to Chi-Chi's Pizza in Canyon Country. Stop in or call ahead, 288-0222. You've been assigned to plan your office party. Time to bring in the experts. AV Party Rentals is your go-to place for the most innovative holiday party ideas. AV's been planning Santa Clarita events from giant galas to intimate gatherings for longer than, well, since Rudolph was a young fawn. AV will turn your office party into a winter wonderland. See the latest holiday displays at Santa Clarita's favorite wedding, party, and holiday event rental store. AV Party Rentals on Newhall Avenue and at avpartyrental.com. Join Santa Clarita Transit on Saturday, November 11th for a patriotic ride to Knott's Berry Farm. The one-day round-trip service coincides with Knott's Berry Farm's annual military tribute days, offering free park admission to all retired or active U.S. military, plus one guest. This Santa Clarita Transit excursion to Knott's Berry Farm is available for everyone for just $3 each way. New this year, buy your tickets using the Token Transit mobile app. Details at SantaClaritaTransit.com. The Santa Clarita Artists Association has a new gallery in downtown Newhall on 6th Street between Main and Railroad, right across from the Canyon Theatre Guild. The gallery features our members' paintings, sculptures, and one-of-a-kind handcrafted gift items. Whether you're an art lover, buyer, or an artist wishing to join, visit our website at santaclaritaartist.org, come to our free monthly meetings at Barnes & Noble, or stop by the gallery. For upcoming events and exhibits, check us out at santaclaritaartist.org. We make visual art visible. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one advanced audiology with the purple sign. 
next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. Hometown, your hometown station. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, KHTS. And welcome, Kim Wall. Hi, how, guys. How are you? I am welcome great. Back. Thank good, you. Good, Thank you good. for having me. I so enjoy my time here. Um, just being able to give people the hope that there's, you know, we can have quality as well as quantity of life. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I see a little green paper over I there. I did. I was. It must was be well, you know something? what? I was listening to this gentleman, this author, this doctor speaking about his book, and it was called Fast Food Genocide. Uh-huh. And yeah. it was oh how right? interesting and it was wow. so it was so crazy to listen to some of the statistics he talked about and and he's an MD and what he is a nutritionist so he was talking how he dealt with blood pressure and um, diabetes and mental decline mm-hmm. using our foods and how with what's happened in our fast food industry our food has become so processed there are there are no live phytonutrients left in our foods anymore so what we're getting is we're getting huge dosages of sugar and white flour and highly mm-hmm. over fried uh, oils and unfortunately, there is no nutritional value in those things, but they're, they're inflammatory. They can cause DNA damage, which we know can cause cells to do things we don't want our cells to do. But it was really crazy. He was saying that just having fast food two to three times a week can increase your death from heart disease by 50%. Wow. And I agree with right? that. Right? Yes. I, I agree. Wow. We talked and about it before. There's, you know, you're you are poisoning yourself. But that high genocide exactly. you're poisoning and, and yourself. And the and the scary thing was when he talked about <clears throat> women who have had or just in general eating fried french fries from fast food places mm-hmm. because the oil is in clean property, a lot of that oil is super carcinogenic. So you're eating this potato with this huge dose of this poison mm-hmm. in it that they said that could increase the risk of breast cancer and prostate cancer because those are both estrogen rich components in the body again by many percentages and it was it was really it was one of those things you know it like you said doctor you know it but when you start listening to those numbers and think how many people maybe every single day monday through friday eat a eat a fast food meal but they eat good at home so it's just a little bit of poison every day so it's not going to catch up to you as fast but Again, we with the power of the dollar, we can make those differences. And the cool thing was, as he did, he talked about, you know, Alzheimer's, dementia, depression, mental aggression. Some of these foods have neuro uh, exciters in them because the toxins that make people aggressive and mean and depressed, which, again, if we kind of look at it the back way, it's kind of feeding all these diseases in mm-hmm. hospitals and things as well. But the really crazy thing is, as he's saying, in our society today, we're seeing one in five adults that have some form of mental decline or mental unstableness we see depression we see lack of focus we see um alzheimer's dementia i mean it's through the roof we didn't see that back you know 100 years ago but again what we're seeing is so much of our food is so processed that those Mm -hmm. phytonutrients those phytochemicals that are in there that are antioxidants aren't there and this guy had a really cool um um, when you when you take the letters and you make a thing out of it, you know his mm-hmm. was the G bombs, and what G bombs G bombs are how you stay healthy, and what G bombs are are all the things that help to feed the brain and feed the body in an appropriate way. So G being your greens, all your green vegetables, uh-huh. green things. Bean B's being your beans, mm-hmm. so your beans and your legumes. Your O's being onions. Oh, and I love onions. They're so good for us, right? And M for mushrooms. Oh, I love those too. B's for berries. And S for seeds. And again, talking about mushrooms, do you know that if a woman consumes mushrooms, cooked mushrooms, and it doesn't have to be, I mean, that's that whole thing is understanding cooking. You know, we're not Mm -hmm. overcooking, but even a saute of some mushrooms. Mushrooms alone, eaten daily, can reduce your risk of breast cancer by 64%, this gentleman was saying. Whoa. How powerful is that? Because in the mushrooms is a component that helps to block the chemical estrogens in the breast tissue, similar to what tamoxifen in their research does. Mm -hmm. So 
we don't want the side effects of the poison, right. but we want the benefits of the phytonutrients in this case to protect those estrogen risk receptors in our breasts or prostate, because both of those are where we're seeing advanced diseases today because of those toxins, but it can protect that tissue. And that's what his thing was. It was about hope. Even if you have these issues going on, simply by increasing as he talked, a big part of it, which we discussed before, is the, the geo in the, in the gut. Mm -hmm. And when we eat these raw, and our, our greens should be as raw as we can do because they're going to have those nutrients. They're going to bind into that intestinal tract to create a prebiotic environment for things to grow, mm -hmm. our fermented foods, things like that as well. But then he also talked about the cooked things that also heal that lining are the cooked beans and the cooked mushrooms because those mm -hmm. beans are a, a slower burning car, but they bind in there so they don't let other things get into the intestinal tract too quickly. So it deals with blood sugar and it would deal mm -hmm. with mood and things as well. So again, something as simple as putting some black beans in a salad with a little bit of protein or hemp seeds, which is one of our favorites, you can take that meal and because you're doing it in that raw green home vegetables, mm -hmm. your brain is going to absorb it better. You're going to get a better absorption out of it. And that's kind of what we want to look at. You know, mm -hmm. even if you're going to so-and-so's and you're getting a salad, you know, if the salad is just iceberg lettuce, it's really nothing more than a vessel to bring you dressing full of sugar and, mm -hmm. and you know, whatever. But he was saying one of the reasons it's such an issue is, is because most of our calories today in our society is coming from junk food. Mm -hmm. Instead Absolutely. of coming right, instead of coming from good proteins, good fats, good vegetables, and again, like we've said, you know, sometimes it can be as simple as you know certain things like kale and Swiss chard and collards. Those things grow like weeds. You know, you can plant mm -hmm. one of those in a container, and you can go out and pick a couple leaves every single day and get a new new leaves. That's what I do at my house. Mm -hmm. So you can do that very simply by making a like I said, a nice raw salad with some of those uh, greens right out of your garden. And again, you know the quality of what you're getting as well as the lack of pesticides. And he was saying with like berries and things, sometimes we need to rethink how our world is today because of all the transport. That when we're doing things like berries and things, sometimes the frozen berries are actually better for us than fresh berries. Mm -hmm. Because the frozen berries are picked fresh and frozen immediately. Our fresh berries today, a lot of them are sprayed with fungicides after they're picked, so they won't mold in the container mm -hmm. while they go along their journey. So you're getting a longer nice. shelf life out of it. And certain things like a raspberry, let's say, you're not going to be able to wash that very well. That's a very yeah. hard fruit to clean. Mm -hmm. So it might be, exactly, area. and it might be organically grown, but now if it goes to this plant to be processed... So, again, maybe, again, and it's cheaper when it's frozen. It's not as high price point as when it's fresh, and you're not going to have the waste. Let's, so Let's drop back a little bit because, uh, you know, on the, the G-bombs that you mm -hmm. had mentioned, you know, you, you're, you're talking about, you know, um, getting uh, all of these G-bombs, but where do you, you know, you can grow them, and you might then know what your soil, what's in your soil but when you go to market and purchase the G bombs, um, you don't always know where they're coming from. And you know, some people will say, "Hey, it's organic. Oh, it's grown, you know, without these, you know, fertilizers and these pesticides around it." How how do you know that it's authentic? How do you know with well, what there there is the you can't analyze you're it right. yourself, and, and that, it's really too bad because I'd so, love to call out. So some are of those. there places that you know without? putting big advertisements out for some there of these, are you know because we always mention trader joe's and whole foods here mm -hmm. and uh sprouts um, sprouts as well so but you know there's even and and i'm not a, a shopper of, of some of these big places because my family has changed but you know even in costco and places now there there is that organic it says organic it is and if there is organic, if you know, it has Vons organic. right if it has the the emblem on there there is a organic gmo emblem on there if that's on there then they have had to go through a process process. Now okay. you're right. How good is that process? I don't know. Because my thought mm -hmm. is this, when people tell me, oh, I got some beautiful organic strawberries from, you know, our local neighborhood over here up in Santa, uh, up by the beach <clears throat> in uh, Ventura, those 
strawberries are grown beside the freeway. Yes, yep. they So are. they might be as organic as you want them to be, but mm-hmm. the air that's coming up and landing on them is not organic. Mm-hmm. So no, that's where not. You, you definitely don't want it to be a genetically modified organism because no. what that means is you're getting a high pesticide load. So mm-hmm. anytime you can step back any degree, it's going to be to your benefit. Yes, mm-hmm. when I get strawberries, which I'm not a big eater of them, but when we do, I put them in my alkaline water and I put them in my acid water because the high alkaline water will take any pesticides off because it's a degreaser. It's water, so it's not toxic, but it will pull. When I pour my water off some of my, like I did pomegranates the other day out of my yard. I don't have, my house, 33 years, no, no pesticides. I have an organic house, but I live in the San Fernando Valley. So here I have my pomegranates. I'm going to get ready to pick them all and sit down and do a two-hour picking of seeds because they're so good. And I put them in water because it, it's nice to hydrate it, but I get all the outside stuff off. That water that comes off of those is brown. That's brown. Wow. Now, that is stuff that would have been consumed into the body. So, yes, you want to get as close as you can to the source of it and do. But you're right. Our world today, and that's kind of where we need to take back that, is what are all these chemicals? And, you know, it's really crazy when you understand the history of why it, how it got here. We've been sold something that was created back in World War I and II to mm-hmm. kill people. And then when we it finished World War II and we had this huge chemical company that had all these poisons and gases and things to kill mm-hmm. people, well, I don't want to lose my business, so mm-hmm. what are we going to do? Hey, we're going to convince the American farmers that, you know what, we're going to go after bugs and we're going to, ki- we're going to kill the bugs. Well, just like our bodies, we have good bugs and we have bad bugs. And it's about our bugs living in harmony. <laughs> it's right. not about Little giving balance. one bug more power over the other bug. <laughs> because when that happens, then, then chaos happens. And it's something in our bodies as simple as we talked about before, candida. That whole mm-hmm. thing about the intestinal tract. You know, if the candida, if you just read candida overgrowth symptoms, which some of the literature says out there, you know, 80 to 90% of our population has... You have the mental decline. You have easily bruising. You have joint pain. You have so many physical illnesses that nobody would ever associate with that. But again, how did we get there? We inherit it from our parent, our mother, but we also get it because as we've seen Barb's generation to my generation to this generation, how much more refined sugar and refined white flour in our diet, and those are two key components that we know that are even our cancer people say are going to feed and bad, grow cancer. Bad, bad. Right. And Absolutely. I was looking today because, like I said, I knew you always want to pick that little part of my brain, mm-hmm. but I was looking at, we were having a discussion with somebody about the, the drinks that are made for people that are meal replacements, okay? There's a bunch out there for the seniors, and now they, whatever, and they now market it for children, exactly. You know, when you go on there and you look at one of these products, and I Googled one of them this morning before I came in, and it was, you know, it's got all this protein in it. Uh It's got 27 grams of protein. And it had two grams of fiber. Mm -hmm. So... You're putting and something. How much through, sugar? Oh, it was disgusting. Just don't even and there go was there. four or five yeah. different sugars listed on there. One of them being corn syrup, which is a genetically modified inflammatory cancer promoting product. So it's just it's yes, we want to have it, but but again, we have the power of our dollar. So when you go That's into right. that store, just ask, hey, your grapes are coming from Chile. Okay, well, is it really worth eating that grape at this time of the year? Maybe it's not, you know. Maybe if you could get frozen grapes or something, you know, which we do. But you, that's that whole thing. We used to live in seasons. <laughs> We're blessed in our world today that we can we can stretch some of those seasons with greenhouses and other things. But we still need to be cautious that that food isn't coming from a country that uses pesticides that we don't use and we're not going to test for. Yeah. But, again, it's 50 then, cents cheaper or, yeah. you know. And And that's exactly what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. We're talking about, you know – bringing food in and now it's there's not there's no more seasons no you can we can get citrus from around the world coming to our country it might come in frozen but you know where is it coming from and you know how you validate that you know in that chain of of how it's getting to us you know you want to be able to go backwards on it but you know it's going to be impossible well we kind of gave to do that right we kind of gave our whole food thought process up to the industry Mm -hmm. and the industry has told us you know this is what you have for breakfast and this is what you have for lunch and this is what you have for dinner and this is what Mm -hmm. you do Mm -hmm. but you know we're the only culture that gets up in the morning and stuffs our face with sugar 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, really, cereal. It's, it's, it's true. Cereal, cereal right. donuts, true. bagels, sugar. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we wonder why we're chasing the sugar <laughs> high the rest of the day. And at the end of the day, we all crash. And why can't we sleep? And why are we depressed? And why do we have no energy? Well, <clears throat> if your car isn't running right, you're going to take it to the mechanic, and if the mechanic tells you, hey, you're putting the wrong gas in the car and you mm -hmm. choose to continue to do that, then yes. But the thing is, is the people out there that want that difference, you know, that come to you and ask those questions or listen to the radio stations or the interesting television where they expand that mind process, those are the people that, like I said, take that dollar, call up that person, call up your congressman or your senator and say, why is this happening in my in my community, explain it to me. Because I think part of it is we just think we, we don't matter. But mm -hmm. if we all took that dollar and put it together, we would matter in ways that would get them in the pocketbook. As my mother brought up to me the other day, well, didn't you see the McDonald's is going to do, yeah. you know, non-hormone, non-this, you know, yeah. chicken. That's great. But again, like we were talking about the oil and the French fries it's and a, other components, it's a that's small it's a step. small step. In true, if you're going to do it, then let's do it. That's great. Am I going to go eat that? No, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if at least if we realize that our food is what's contributing to disease, which is contributing to the downfall and the decline of health in America, I would say enough is enough. You know, one of the things that, you know, I cherish uh, and the great invention is the blender. Mm. And I think that you know, for our seniors especially, so you know, easy. you know, if sometimes biting into some of these, uh, especially these, mm -hmm. these vegetables is not easy. But I blend this stuff, mm -hmm. and you know, sometimes you can blend one thing, and you know, gain all that flavor, mm -hmm. all that nutrition, mm -hmm. and you know where it's coming from, and you're hoping, yeah, it's a good place that it is coming from, uh, but. You know, it's healthy. Oh, and some so of the you research get on that? Get, get blenders. Yeah. If you're going to, for the holidays, if you're the or little, a birthday you party. The little bullet the small, ones that oh, are super small. Easy. Yeah. yeah. Why not? And a powerful way to take control of your life because, again, you look at a lot of people that do juicings for cancer and other diseases. It's amazing what they can turn around in a very short period of time because they're giving the body huge doses of these phytonutrients mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. go in and quench all the crazy cells. <laughs> so we've, we've had the A-bomb, the H-bomb, and now we have the G-bomb. G-bomb! <laughs> coming from Ken Wall, we're going to take a break on your hometown station, KHTS. You. Let's go inside the mind of a 10-year-old. I should have worn earrings today. Buckle up, Sarah. Michaela's got, like, the best earrings. Sarah, buckle up. I wish my name was Michaela. We're not hitting the road until you buckle up, honey. Oh, yeah. Seatbelt. I wonder if there's pizza at school today. It can be tough getting through to kids, but it's your job to make sure they're wearing your seatbelts. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. When you have a craving for delicious tacos, you've got to try Shredded Tacos, home of Gene's famous salsa. Shredded beef and chicken, slow cooked and seasoned, placed in a corn tortilla and cooked to order in an iron skillet. Every order comes with a side of Gene's famous salsa, featuring an Italian twist that'll leave you wanting more. Shredded Tacos, featured on KTLA's Burroughs Bites. On Newhall Ranch Road in Dickinson, spreading taco happiness daily. Canyon Country now has a one-stop printing shop. Feathers, photo signs and printing. Feathers, signs, banners, business cards, embroidery, photo restoration, picture framing, car wraps, all under one roof. Transfer your old videos, slides, and 8mm movies to DVD. Print custom t-shirts and jackets with your team or business logo. Create a banner for your school. It's all possible at Feathers. Feathers, you've driven by them daily on Soledad across the street from the Edwards Theaters next to the coffee kiosk. Discover Feathers, Canyon Country's one-stop printing Shop. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one Advanced Audiology with the purple sign next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. Drug and alcohol use can lead to troubles at school or work, relationship problems, financial or legal difficulties, medical and psychiatric issues. I'm Bob Sheritz, the host of the Way Out Recovery Hour, airing every Monday at noon. 
The Way Out Recovery Hour features prominent guests and organizations discussing the epidemic of drugs and alcohol in our valley. Don't miss The Way Out Recovery Hour every Monday at noon. Asking for help is the first step. There is The Way Out. Your hometown station, KHTS. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me? When I'm 64. Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, KHTS. And we're speaking with Kim Wall, an alternative medicine advocate, and she is full of all kinds of good information. <laughs> I mean, it just comes falling out of your mouth. Well, you know, Barb, that's why I'm so passionate about it. You know, I go places and I listen and I learn. And, you know, when people go, ooh, I'm watching the real housewives of so-and-so. Well, I'm watching the real doctors of so-and-so, uh-huh. you know. And, and I was having a, a conversation with my, my um, dad's wife girlfriend, best friend, whatever you want to call it anyways, other person. And she was telling me how she'd been in the industry many, many years ago and listening to all these doctors back then. And, and mm-hmm. she was saying, oh, I remember that one. And I'm watching this thing on the cure for cancer. And I remember this doctor from 40 years ago. Oh and I remember goodness. this one from this. And I was thinking to myself, isn't it sad that you're telling me I only got into this 30 years ago, but you're telling me that 40 years ago, these people were there in the industry doing Mm -hmm. this. This guy couldn't get a citizenship from our government because he had a cure for cancer, and this one couldn't get a patent for his product because his product would cut into the pharmaceutical, and this one couldn't Mm -hmm. do, and it was like, wow, we don't even know the manipulation that's happened to us in the last Mm -hmm. 100 years since the Fitzer report. But the key is this. When you go to that doctor, when you go to that store, you're the consumer. If you don't like the answer the doctor is giving you, go to another doctor. If there's no more doctors in your thing, then go to your insurance company and say, I want to have alternative care, or I want somebody that's going to give me another answer besides saying, you have a blood pressure problem, here's a blood pressure pill. Well, you know what? Blood pressure is one of those things when you kind of look at the vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things that depletes magnesium out of your body besides stress is lack of sleep. Mm -hmm. Well, Again, that, then you're starting that, that cycle again, and then you're stressed and you're not sleeping. Something as simple as 500 milligrams of magnesium a night for three, four, five weeks can change so many things in your life besides blood pressure, muscle spasms, mood, digestion. Magnesium deals with over 350 mechanisms in the body it regulates. And if just one night of not sleeping can throw that off, then, like I said, then you're chasing that demon. And then where do you go? You end up with the whole cycle of the, the coffees and the sugars and the this. And then I get tonight and I can't sleep, so I'm doing the alcohols and the depressants. And again, when we look at this whole food aspect, if we're not getting the nutrients in to heal the brain and help the brain recuperate, then what are we seeing? We're seeing what's happening in our world today. We see degeneration of the brain. But what should be in your face is the big red flag is we all accept it as we get older, that that's what happens, which is a load of you know what. Yes. But to see the exact same thing happening in our children mm. should be the huge red flag because that shouldn't be happening. And yet we're right. seeing it associated with both. We're seeing it with poor food. We're seeing it with lack of physical activity. Children are stuck to little things in their face and they don't go run around outside in the sunshine. As well as the toxic load we're seeing in the vaccines we're putting into these children and these people. And again, it's not about what we stick in, it's about what our body can do for us. We wanna live to that optimum quality of health. And if we have a backache or we can't sleep or we get that little scratch in our throat, what do we do? I come home, I pop some zinc lozenges, I do some hot lemonade with some honey in it. I do some magnesium. I do the things I know, some grapefruit seed extract that's going to kill anything out there, viral, fungal, bacterial, parasitical. My favorite tool in 31 years is grapefruit seed extract. Would not leave home without it. That's how powerful it is. And Mm non-toxic. You can't beat it. And it doesn't matter what you have. It mm-hmm. can help kill that. And that's what it's about, giving the body what it needs mm-hmm. so that we can express what we want our genes to express. I don't want to express cancer. I don't want to express Alzheimer's. I want to express longevity. I want to be able to go out and do. And, you know, no matter what our age is, sometimes, like I know you do, Barb, with your exercising and stuff, you push yourself. You know, oh, yes. you go out there and oh, you do yeah. things outside your box that you would never have thought to do. And why? Because you're stretching your brain and you're stretching your body to have that longevity. That's right. 
and you're putting money into the bank, your bank account isn't in the negative. It's in the positive. That's right. And that's Absolutely. what we want to be. We want to be in the positive so we can draw off of that when we need in a stressful moment. Yeah, I completely agree with you. <laughs> you know, I, I think we talked about some time ago uh, a bad food, and it was yogurt. Did you no. ever do any research on that? It's so bad because, unfortunately, with all the – um, growth hormones in the milk that are designed to get these cows, to the breast, to overproduce milk mm -hmm. by putting that same energy into a female breast that <clears throat> isn't producing milk. Again, what's causing those cells, that epigenetics, to express mm -hmm. a negative response instead of a positive? So if you put in this hyperestrogen load that's got all those still stimula stimulated, and then we go in and we put on a lotion, a perfume, a cologne, a cleaning product that's toxic, and a chemical estrogen that's going to go in and stimulate those cells, boom, boom. or the french fries, you've got a wildfire because yep. you're putting in that carcinogenic oil, mm -hmm. which should be a good oil. It should be an oil that would be healing mm -hmm. to the body Absolutely. as opposed to one that's going to feed, feed. And the biggest thing it does, I think, with the bad oils, too, is it's an anti, it's a, in a, it causes an inflammatory response. We want the anti-inflammatories in there. Oils should cool our body and heal our cells. And unfortunately, again, in that beverage we talked about mm -hmm. earlier that's supposed to be so good for you. Mm -hmm. It had soybean oil, which is genetically modified. It had canola oil, which is mm -hmm. a poison. And it had safflower oil. Wow. So <laughs> three fats that we wouldn't want to take to think we're, and again, and you think you're doing the right thing, but you can. Dr. Dora, you're mm -hmm. simple. Mm -hmm. Throw it in a blender. Get yourself a great protein mm -hmm. at, the, at the store. It's very inexpensive. You put a scoop of that protein powder in your blender and make it what you want it to be. Absolutely. And I like to tell, pe right. tell people for kale and things like that when it's hard to blend it, if you throw it in the freezer and then when it comes out, it's crunchy and you can smash yes. it, That's then right. you throw it in the blender, oh, it blends yes. better. It, so it just, certainly a, just does. a little trick. It yeah. certainly does. So we've tricks. gone from fast food genocide to G-bombs today to down with yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Uh, Any way for our, our listeners to contact you? If anyone wants to contact me, my number is 818-683-4876 or educator at kingbio.com. Great, Kim. Always great to have you on the my show. My pleasure, we guys. Are, we are sponsored by Advanced Audiology and Comfort Keepers in Home Care. Listen to us next week on the Senior Hour. Now go and enhance your quality of life. <laughs>